walls could talk. Imagine the stories they would tell. Of the statesmen, explorers, warriors who, since the 1790s, made this home a stop as they traveled Kentucky, then America's western frontier. Of the many men women, children, free and enslaved, who became part of Kentucky's history and heritage while they called Locust Grove their home. What is the magic of Locust Grove that keeps visitors coming, even today, more than 200 years after its construction, while other houses of that era have long since vanished? The answer begins with the power of a famous name, George Rogers Clark. In May 1778, Clark brought a band of settlers and soldiers down the river and built a fort on Corn Island, the first American settlement at the Falls of the Ohio. While the Ohio River was a major thoroughfare for many of the earliest European explorers, as well as for traders and pioneers, all of them had to stop at the falls, sometimes waiting weeks for the water to rise high enough to navigate the rapids. What was first just a stopping place soon became a settlement and eventually would grow into a city called Louisville. It was during the early years of the Revolutionary War, when Clark was just 25 years old, that he returned to Kentucky, not only to settle, but also to conquer those western lands for Virginia. Following a series of military victories at Kaskaskia, Cahokia, and Vincennes against the British in the Northwest Territory in February of 1779, Clark and his force of about 180 fighters marched to capture Vincennes, now Indiana, for the second time. The weather was miserable. The land was flooded. Making a show of his disregard for the elements, Clark cajoled his troops along by singing and joking, and making it clear that deserters would be shot. Lieutenant Governor Henry Hamilton and his British army hunkered down against the harsh winter were taken by surprise and surrendered the fort after a two-day siege. That battle was instrumental in claiming the Northwest Territory, the land that would become Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, and prompted London to abandon its planned western invasion of the Ohio River Valley. If not for George Rogers Clark, the Ohio River might still mark our nation's border. Native Americans had used this area for hunting and for burial grounds for thousands of years, and now fought fiercely for the freedom to freely traverse the river and its fertile valley. In the midst of violent conflict, Clark, appointed by the new federal government, negotiated successful peace treaties and came to be respected by both sides for his peacemaking skills. But for all his accomplishments, General Clark's later years were hard. He never was repaid for the expenses he incurred in the war. He was plagued by ill health and slanders about his conduct in the field. Without a family of his own, Clark often visited Locust Grove, the home of his sister Lucy and her husband William Cron, once his surveying partner. Cron, born in Ireland, had been commissioned as a captain in the 8th Virginia Regiment during the Revolutionary War. He crossed the Delaware River with George Washington after wintering at Valley Forge. He was taken prisoner at the fall of Charleston in 1780, where he first encountered members of the Clark family and was later freed on parole. Look closely at his portrait, and you will see the insignia of the Society of the Cincinnati, a fraternal organization of a select group of revolutionary officers, including the man who would be our first president, George Washington. Cron retired from the military as a major and settled in Louisville in 1784 an active member of the Louisville community, 
he married Lucy Clark in 1789, and the next year began purchasing the land on which Locust Grove was soon built. Using a crew of skilled builders and slave artisans, Cron built Locust Grove using local materials. It was one of the first brick houses in the region, and it reflected the traditional Georgian style popular in early America. In 1809, after an accident that resulted in the loss of a leg, General Clark moved permanently to Locust Grove. This is Clark's apartment, restored as accurately as evidence allowed to show how it might have looked in 1809 when the general lived here. Many people whose names are part of American history pass through these doors. After completing their famous expedition to the West, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, George Rogers' younger brother, visited the house in 1806. In this room, Lewis and Clark described such unknown animals as the prairie dog, grizzly bear, the mountain goat, and the lynx, told stories of the Native Americans they met on their trip, and described their first sight of the Pacific Ocean. The residents of Locust Grove were perhaps the first in the settled United States to learn of the vast wonders their country held to the West. Locust Grove is the only site west of the Appalachians and the only site still standing anywhere that sheltered the explorers together. Aaron Burr, the disgraced vice president, also visited Clark and Cron at Locust Grove, probably trying to enlist their support in a plan to create a colony west of the Appalachians. John James Audubon, the young French artist who loved to draw birds, remembered the hospitality he knew at Locust Grove. Several of the paintings in his Birds of America were based on drawings from Locust Grove. Two presidents visited in 1819. President James Monroe, on a tour of Western military installations, was accompanied by future president Andrew Jackson, who would visit again with his wife, Rachel. Zachary Taylor, elected president in 1848, visited here many times. His father's farm, Springfield, was just east of Locust Grove. For all of the famous names and associations of Locust Grove, the real appeal of the home was created by all the people who lived and worked here day in and day out. Locust Grove was one of the great houses of the Kentucky countryside, commanding nearly 700 acres of land beginning at the hills above the Ohio River and extending down its banks. And while most Kentuckians still lived more simply, for Cron, having become a wealthy man and one of Jefferson County's leading citizens, life in the house was the height of luxury for the day. The family appreciated fine wines, bought imported china, and treated their many guests to sugar, coffee, and other delicacies. But most of the material of daily life came from the farm itself. In the fields, enslaved African Americans worked the crops, attended stock, and created most of the necessities of life. Here, Lucy and William Cron raised their eight children, six boys, two of whom were twins, and two girls, all of whom traveled in the social circles of the day, but whose lives seemed always to return to Locust Grove. Locust Grove was a mixed farm with a variety of crops and livestock. The slave population, at its highest, was 48 individuals. The slaves probably were allowed to earn a bit of money by selling animals they raised or the produce from their own garden plots. They also were hired out at times to work in Louisville. By 1856, all of the slaves had been emancipated, freed by the will of Dr. John Cron, William's son, the last of William and Lucy's children to live at Locust Grove. John, a physician, acquired Mammoth Cave, the world's longest cave system. He experimented with it as a tuberculosis hospital because of its suspected healing powers. But that having failed, he turned it into an extremely successful tourism venue with the help of skilled slave guides, such as Stephen Bishop, who was the first to map the cave. Mammoth Cave stayed in the Cron family until 1926, when it became a state park, and today is part of the National Park System. As most of the Crons came to join George Rogers Clark in the family cemetery, Locust Grove changed drastically. Usage and time obscured the former glory of the house. Even the graves were moved to Cave Hill Cemetery. Ownership changed hands twice in the late 1800s. In 1878, it was sold to the Paul family. 
and in 1883 to Richard Waters, whose family would run Locust Grove as a farm until 1961. But the memory of Locust Grove's past was still strong. If not, all might have been lost in 1961 when the farm was auctioned off on the steps of the Jefferson County Courthouse. The Commonwealth and county government outbid developers for the house and its remaining 55 acres. The house, grounds, outbuildings, and gardens were then restored to the highest standards of the day. Locust Grove's most recent restoration took place in 2009 and 2010. Using sophisticated investigative equipment and techniques and documentary research, it was possible to determine and duplicate the paints, reproduce the wall coverings, and suggest the style of furnishings used during the period when Clark lived here with the Crons. Locust Grove today is a mingling of memories from all who were a part of its remarkable heritage. The war heroes, the slaves, the empire builders, the explorers, scoundrels, artists, and the people who simply called it home. Locust Grove survives as a record of what life was for them. And as one of America's great historic homes, built on what was once the edge of America. <laughs>